There are brands that change the course of eyewear history. And there are brands that are worn by millions of people all over the planet. And there are brands that sold out and live off a past legacy. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the top 10 eyewear brands in history. So hi, I'm Robert, Style and Vision Consultant here at the Spectacle Factory. It's my job to pair you with your perfect pair of glasses. And if you're an eyewear enthusiast, if you're an eyewear collector, you need to know about the 10 brands that I'm going to talk about today because they have all, in one way, shape or form, influenced how we buy glasses today. I'm going to start at number 10 with Maui Jim. They have one of the biggest followings, literally the biggest followings ever in history with eyewear enthusiasts, people who want the best sunglasses. There are many, many millions of people out there that will tell you they will only wear Maui Jim. Maui Jim have for a long time made sunglasses to an incredibly high standard. This particular model is the Adrift. It's from their luxury collection, which I think represents the pinnacle of what Maui Jim represents. These are not just excellent functional sunglasses, but they're incredibly stylish and beautiful at the same time. What we see is the titanium chassis that's made in Japan with an acetate outer lens rim, also featuring negative space in these upper corners. It's a beautiful lady style that is every bit as good as you would want a pair of sunglasses to be. But where did Maui Jim begin? Well, the story goes that the founder of Maui Jim was actually selling sunglasses by the pool in Hawaii. And that's where Maui Jim comes from. It's actually a Hawaiian-based company. Over the years, their family business built up and up and up until it became one of the three biggest brands in the world. And the other two we're going to be talking about in this video as well. But Maui Jim did it with zero marketing and they did it while remaining independent. Sadly, a couple of years ago, they did sell out to Kering, who now own Maui Jim in their entirety. But I haven't seen any kind of slowdown in the quality of the product, and that's the most important thing, I guess, although it is a shame. But the fact that Maui Jim rivaled the two biggest players in the market, went head to head with them, and created something that was actually top class, unlike the other two, that is something that makes Maui Jim a revered sunglasses brand. Also, their attitude to customer service over the years has been incredible. I hope that doesn't change either. And those are all the reasons why Maui Jim make this list. Now, next up, and a brand that I'm less enthusiastic about, but have to give credit where it's due, is Limburg. And I only say that because over the last 10 years, Limburg have established themselves so much that they haven't needed to innovate to go any further. And when brands start to stagnate and start to just make money from their reputation, that's something that doesn't appeal to me. And I think that's kind of where Limburg are at the moment. But going back, Limburg are no doubt the most influential minimalistic glasses brand of all time. And that is not easy to achieve. Limburg have got there by making great glasses. Their frames are still produced in Denmark and again, were family owned until Kering purchased them. It's starting to see a trend. And this is a worrying trend in the eyewear industry because the conglomeration of different eyewear brands is not a good thing for consumers. But Limburg remain great quality glasses. I would recommend to buy them, except I do think there are brands now doing it better than them. And we've talked about that in other videos. We're not going to get into that today. But Limburg do deserve their place on this list for creating probably the best minimalistic eyewear brand of all time. At number seven on this list is Oliver Peoples, an historic eyewear brand founded in the 80s. Oliver Peoples are still today the quintessential brand for that classic preppy American acetate look. Now, that doesn't mean they're the best at it. Brands like Barton Prera, for example, are significantly higher quality nowadays, but Oliver Peoples are massively influential in making that kind of style still stylish and trendy, even in 2024, 40 years on from when the company was founded. It's a very interesting story about how the brand got its name. Back in the 80s, when the company was being founded, they actually purchased a a lot of frames, of vintage frames, which they were going to resell. I think they paid something like $5,000 for that first batch of frames that they then resold. And the name on the receipt of the frames, so the person who had originally owned that lot of vintage glasses was Oliver Peoples. And so they decided to name their company after him. It's a cool story. And Oliver Peoples were a really cool brand. Now they're owned by Luxottica. They don't have the same, for me, the same passion that they would have had 20 years ago, which is a shame as their glasses are still cool today. They're reasonably well made. They could be better, but they're certainly not bad glasses. And Oliver Peoples is one more brand with a huge 
following. To those people, I would say, try brands like Garrett Light, try Barton Pereira, both of which were founded after all of the peoples were purchased by Luxottica. So it's interesting that their influence is still resonating today. The, those offshoots of different brands that came from all of the peoples originally are still coming up with new glasses, new styles, new shapes, new colors, all because of all of the peoples. And that is why they comfortably make this list. Now, a brand that surprisingly remains independent is Moscot. It's a shame that Moscot have managed to do that by shifting their production to China. Lots of brands are doing it nowadays. And to be fair, China does have different areas of manufacturing. There is the really cheap, plastic, nasty side of China, but there is actually a high quality side of China manufacturing as well. And to be fair, brands like Moscot, brands like Garrett Late are not bad glasses, but at the same time, they're not what they used to be in terms of quality. And I think a lot of consumers are noticing that and that is hurting the brand's reputation. But that reputation is gonna take a lot more to kill it because Moscot are responsible for some of the most quintessential frame styles ever. I mean, if you think Oliver Peoples have got heritage by being founded in the 80s, Moscot goes all the way back to 1915. That is true history, and it's a brand that really needs to be preserved. And they still have avid celebrity wearers like Johnny Depp, for example. Moscot is a super cool brand, and combining them with tints is, to be fair, it's probably like the original brand that had to be paired with a lens tint, and they still offer lens tints in their own frames, which I love, although our custom tints, of course, are that little bit better. And I think they deserve to be that little bit higher than Oliver Peoples, Limburg, simply because they tread a path that very few other brands have tread. To last more than 100 years is outstanding. What more can you say? Now, the next brand, I think you would expect to be higher on this list. But let me explain. We're going to be talking about Oakley. And as a treat for you, I have got one of the most special sunglasses in history. And that's what Oakley used to be known for. Oakley, when they were made in the USA, were truly one of, probably, well, probably the most innovative eyewear brand of all time. Not just in terms of how they revolutionized the frames themselves, but how they revolutionized the marketing of frames. They talked about materials like plutonite. They talked about unobtainium. And these are all just their own buzzwords. They don't actually mean anything. Plutonite is just another term for polycarbonate that lots of other brands use. And unobtainium is just another name for gorillamide that you see Maui Jim using all the time. But Oakley made their wearers feel excited about the product by giving them those, frankly, really cool names. I don't blame people for getting invested in it. And especially when you see eyewear designs like this, not that you would like wear it, not many people would wear frames like this, but it does catch your eye, I mean, literally. This is one of the most special pieces that Oakley ever made. The fact that Oakley were made in the USA was something to be incredibly proud of because very few brands are. Unfortunately, that's no longer the case. Oakley shifted all of the production, pretty much, to China, as they love to do. That's kind of their business model. And Oakley has just died a death in terms of innovation. You know, when was the last time they came up with something like this? And the first thing that Luxottica did is close down the US factories. And they did it by force as well, because when Oakley didn't want to sell out, they instantly removed their product from Sunglass Hut, which Luxottica also owns. That drove the share price of Oakley way down and it was gonna kill their business. So they were forced to sell. And along with Oakley came Oliver Peoples because Oakley owned Oliver Peoples at that time as well. And that's how both of those brands ended up in the hands of Luxottica. So it's interesting how these eyewear brands cross paths over time. And it's interesting how they all seem to sell out in the end, apart from Moscot, give them credit for that. But Oakley, even today, to be fair, they're not, for the most part, bad glasses. Now there are some really cheap models like the Holbrook, for example, which is just so plasticky and basic. They do still make some really high quality cycling frames and sports frames in general. I would love to see Oakley coming back to their best. It would be one of the best things for the eyewear industry to reinvigorate that excitement with people and start pushing the boundaries again. And there's no way that you could have a list of the world's biggest eyewear brands without Oakley. Now the next brand on the list will probably surprise you too because it's one that you're unlikely to have heard of, unless you're really into eyewear. And that is Masanaga. How could a brand like Masanaga be above a brand like Oakley? Well, I'm gonna tell you. There are different regions of the world that produce frames. Some frames are made in England, some frames are made in America, France, Italy. 
Japan and China. Now, here in 2024, Japanese frames are known to be the best in the world. Japanese manufacturing is completely unparalleled. A hundred years ago, that wasn't the case. A hundred years ago, Japan was considered like China, cheap, plastic, basic. Masanaga is the company that is responsible for that turnaround. Masanaga were founded in, I think, 1905. The goal was to make Japanese eyewear manufacturing the pinnacle. And a hundred years later, they finally achieved it. They created a guild of opticians in Japan where they were actually training artisans how to make frames. And not just how to make them, but how to make them impeccably well. It's actually written into their business model that whilst they like to make a profit, they are not scared to take a loss. And that just says everything, doesn't it? Because when you have brands like Lutzotica where it's all about profit, like literally everything is just about making money, for a company that says, yes, it's cool to make money, but our reason to be here is to actually just improve the level of craftsmanship. That's the reason why eyewear progresses and that makes me so happy and excited that companies like that exist. And that is why now, today, Japanese eyewear manufacturing is the top of the tree. You have brands like Jack Marie Marge, which we're about to get to. You have brands like Barton Pereira. You have Masanaga frames themselves, but so many others. Matsuda, I could, I could go on forever about the range, the plethora of Japanese brands that are just incredible quality. And that is all thanks to Masanaga. So whilst it might not be a brand that you've heard of, they are one of the most influential eyewear brands of all time. And I'm very excited to tell you that we're gonna be featuring them on this channel very, very soon. I'm gonna be showcasing most of the collection and their collection of frames is huge, it's unparalleled. You're gonna to want to see that, so make sure to subscribe. But Masanaga easily, easily make the top five eyewear brands of all time. I'm not gonna apologize for it and I wish I could put them higher. Next up, speaking of which, Jack Marie Marge. They made it onto the top five and they are by far, yeah, by far the newest of the brands on this list. And that speaks for itself because Jack Marie Marge have had a simply meteoric rise. So if it's such a new brand, how can I place it so highly? Well, there's two things. First of all, the quality of Jack Marie Marge frames is outstanding. There's no question about that. They're handmade in Japan. They're just fantastic. This is a pair that we've been working on with our custom Magma Orange and Sapphire lens tint, which just looks out of this world. And you know, this is such an epic pair of glasses and that's what Jack Marie Marge make. Not just high quality, but super sturdy, super beautiful with the gold inlay, for example, on the tortoiseshell temples. Just from every angle and every detail, Jack Marie Marge frames look excellent. But that's actually not the main reason why they're on this list, because there are plenty of great quality eyewear brands in the world. And by the way, Jack Marie Marge are not in a league of their own, as many people will have you believe. The people who will only collect and wear Jack Marie Marge are like the people who will only collect and wear Rolex watches. You're not actually a watch fan, you're just a fan of that brand. And frankly, you're brainwashed and you're wrong if you think that Jack Marie Marge are the be all and end all of glasses. That's not to take any away from them because they're fantastic but those cultists of Jack Marie Marge are a bit weird. Having said that, the main reason why they make this list is like Oakley, the genuine excitement and thrill that they have put into owning a pair of glasses. There was a time when wearing prescription glasses was seen as a negative. Nowadays it's just an accessory or not even just an accessory but an identity. That's one of my favorite sayings and that's really important because if you need glasses you have to wear them regardless so you may as well feel fantastic in your glasses. Jack Marie Marge have transformed the way people feel about glasses because these are absolutely unapologetic. You can't miss them. They are bold. They are they're huge and the fact that they're helping glasses wearers to embrace eyewear for me is an incredible thing. That's what this channel is all about at the end of the day. The fact that each pair is a numbered limited edition plays a part in that as well. And that's what having a great pair of glasses is all about, is to make you feel good. Jack Marie Marge have done a great job of making their collectors feel good about their glasses. They do deserve a place on this list for changing the eyewear market permanently. And even though it's not a brand that we sell, I love working on custom Jack Marie Marge. Well, the next brand that I'm gonna talk about is one that's been there and done all that before. Kazal. Kazal is the reason why designer glasses exist nowadays. And maybe if they'd never existed, maybe someone else would have come along and popularized frames as a style accessory, but Kazal were simply the ones to do it. That is a heritage unlike any other brand. Kazal was founded by Carrie Zaloni, who was 
uh, an independent designer. He'd actually worked for Dior previously, or so I'm told. I can't actually find anything about that on the internet, but the story goes that he was a designer, worked with fashion brands like Dior, and then realized that he wanted to create his own niche in the eyewear market. And he came up with Kazal. The fact that some of the biggest movie stars, some of the biggest musicians in history have worn Kazal, from Kanye West to Jay-Z to Michael Jackson, you know, even more so than Jack Marie Marge, Kazal have made people feel great about wearing glasses long before it was fashionable to wear glasses, because now it is, you know, it's easier now in the last 10 years. Back in the 70s and 80s, that wasn't such an easy thing to achieve, but Kazal achieved it. And as a special treat for you, I have maybe the most special Kazal frame ever produced. Now, the most iconic model is, of course, the 607, and that will endure forever. That's always going to be maybe the most iconic frame in history. But what we have here is a pair designed by Carrie Zaloni himself before he passed away. The team at Kazal actually found one of his drawings that was never realized. The drawing is here and turned it into a real pair of glasses as an homage to him. And I love that story. It's a beautiful story. The 004 was made from an original drawing by Carrie Zaloni dating from 1991. Its stylistic character tells a history of design. With great technical skill, this model combines a solid metal front with strong acetate temples, 24 karat gold plated, with titanium engraved logo nose pads in gold, the 004 is a masterpiece of design, quality, and craftsmanship. And this is number 248 of 499. And it is for sale as a collector's item. Or oh, you can wear it, you know, why not? If you've got the bravery and the courage to wear this frame, why not? Let's try it on. Here is the end result of Carrie Zaloni's incredible design, the 004. You see a square gold silhouette with hexagonal lenses inside. Again, a use of negative space like we talked about in the Maui gyms, but taken to a whole different level. We've got the Kazal logo engraved along the top. We've got the Kazal logo on the temples. We've got this beautiful tortoiseshell acetate and we've got Carrie Zaloni's signature on the inside. Just, I'm lost for words because this is one of the most wonderful eyewear designs I've ever seen. Not probably one you're gonna wear, you know, like those old Oakleys. Probably not one to wear unless you've got the style that frankly I don't have. But if you have that level of style, I say go for it. But one to keep and cherish and remember one of the most famous designers, eyewear designers in history, Carrie Zaloni, who changed the way we see eyewear, made it cool, made it part of the music industry and a brand that I personally will always love. Now we're down to the top two and I imagine you're dying to find out who the two best eyewear brands of history are. And I had a really, really tough time choosing between them, really tough. To be honest, I still can't quite decide which one should be number one, but I'm gonna explain my reasoning. So at number two, we're going to go with Ray-Ban. So Ray-Ban needs no introduction. You know, you've heard of Ray-Ban, probably everybody in the world has heard of Ray-Ban. And when you think of glasses, especially when you think of sunglasses, you think of Ray-Ban. Now that's a double-edged sword because on the one hand, they are, you know, absolutely iconic. It's like when you think of watches, you think of Rolex. When you think of glasses, you think of Ray-Ban. On the other hand, that amount of popularity has made them by definition basic. They are the basic glasses because they are what almost everybody wears. And that wouldn't be a problem except the quality has declined and declined and declined, at least in my opinion. So today Ray-Ban do not represent a good pair of glasses, but a lot of people still love them for their name. And their name carries a lot of weight, let's be honest. They're the company that pioneered the aviator style, the club master style, the Wayfarer style, three of the most worn frame styles of all time. That makes Ray-Ban an amazing brand. And when they were also like Oakley made in America, they were really good quality glasses. If you can pick up a vintage pair of Ray-Ban frames from the 80s in particular, maybe early 90s, go for it because those are built like a tank. They never seem to fail. But a new pair of Ray-Ban frames in 2024 is anything but. And that's why I can't with good conscience put them at number one, even though they're clearly by far the biggest brand in terms of popularity. But when you think about it, what have they really done in the last 20, 30 years? It's been a long time since they came up with a frame that had the influence of those older styles. 
except the new Meta sunglasses, which to be fair, I will give them all the credit for because that is a cool concept. Using AI in cameras embedded within the frame, I think is super cool and I can't wait to get my hands on a pair so that I can actually review it on this channel, which I will be doing. That is innovative and fair play to Luxottica who've teamed up with Meta to create probably the world's most usable smart glasses, the first ones that you can really see taking off. Will they become something that everybody wears? No, but they are something that a lot of people will wear. I love technology. I'm glad that they're now incorporating technology in a meaningful way into eyewear. So finally, we get to the number one spot. And for me, the biggest, best, most special and influential eyewear brand of all time is Cartier. This is the rimless Premier de Cartier Buffalo Horn in white with adaptive sun blue lenses. Love it or hate it, this particular style, you cannot argue that it looks amazing. It looks beautiful. You can see that this is a work of art. And Cartier frames, every single Cartier frame, at least every single rimless Cartier frame, let me uh, caveat that, is a work of art. In particular, the Buffalo Horn and Wood models. Everything that we talked about with Cazal and Jacques Marie Marge applies to Cartier in the way that they make wearers excited to have them. But unlike those brands, Cartier style is quintessentially Cartier. You know, Jacques Marie Marge have their own brand identity, of course, and so do Cazal. Well, Cazal more so even, to be fair. But you take like a Jack Marie Marge frame and ultimately it is just a thick acetate frame or a thin titanium frame. But Cartier have been making eyewear designs that are just unique to them, like nothing else, but still somehow fashionable and stylish, despite the fact that frames like this are generally not. That takes, well, I don't know what it takes, but I couldn't do it. And no other brand in the world has ever managed to achieve it. They've carved their own identity that transcends eyewear into the realm of jewellery. So many people wear Cartier as an accessory. This is a pair that we produce without prescription. It's available to order. And there are so many people that will wear something like this just for style. Now, people do that with Cazal. People do that with Jacques Marie Marge, but not on the level and the scale of Cartier. They are the most collectible frames in history. And they've been doing it for so long. Obviously, Cartier as a brand are more than 100 years old. But Cartier eyewear goes back, I think, to the 70s. And there are still Cartier frames from that era that have survived until now. And, and that's what makes me put them at number one, because it's the level of quality. Gold or platinum plated, buffalo horn, wood, sometimes solid gold, and there's no compromise. It's not like you can get a cheaper Cartier frame, at least in the rimless. Let's just talk about rimless, because that's what makes Cartier special. Adherence to quality when they could milk a brand like Cartier for so much more money by dropping the price point and compromising on it. I'm so relieved that they've retained their identity and the fact that they're still making designs like this even when fashions change. You know, Cartier do not at all go with the fashion. I could wax lyrical about Cartier all day, but the fact is they are the glasses that make you feel the most special when you wear them. There's no doubt about that. I keep referring to Rolex. It's like when you get your first Rolex. It's a statement of success. It's no wonder that they have so much adoration all over the world. What do you think of my list? Do you agree with the top 10? Are there brands in there that you think should have made the cut? Are there brands that did make the cut that you think I've overrated? Let me know in the comments. I'm sure that this is going to be a very heated debate down there and I'll be joining in with you as well. So really do get involved. If you've enjoyed this video concept, give us a like and subscribe to the channel for more of the best eyewear content on the internet. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks guys. Bye bye.